This is part two of chapter seven's lecture, and we left off talking about the proteins that we find in the cell membrane, and the reason that proteins make such great additions to the cell membrane is because of the versatility that we find among the different amino acids that make up a protein. So as we studied in our last unit, um, there are characteristics and chemical properties for each of the amino acids. Um, we group them like nonpolar, hydrophobic, or polar and hydrophilic. And the reason that this is important is that we have two classifications of proteins in the cell membrane. We have either integral, integral <laughs> that is not coming out right, integral or peripheral. And so, of course, the integral are the ones that are inside the membrane, and the peripheral are going to be on the outside. So if it's an integral protein, it needs to have nonpolar amino acids because it needs to pass through and be a part of that inner hydrophobic portion of the cell membrane. And with those nonpolar amino acids, it's able to anchor that protein into the membrane and make it a transmembrane protein that allows um, molecules to pass through the membrane that otherwise wouldn't be able to get through. So the other type of protein is the peripheral, which is going to be on the outer surface of the membrane. And this is where we can have proteins with polar amino acids that are hydrophilic. And that can extend into the extracellular fluid or into the cytosol, which are both going to be aqueous um, environments that need a hydrophilic molecule to um, work and function correctly. So peripheral proteins are loosely bound to the surface of the membrane and often to um, inter integral proteins. Um, on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane, some membrane proteins are attached to the cytoskeleton. And on the extracellular side, on the outside of the membrane, some membrane proteins attach to the fibers of the ECM, or what we call the extracellular matrix. These attachments combine to give animal cells a stronger framework than the plasma membrane itself could provide. Some integral, integral proteins, so again the ones that are uh, passing through and embedded inside the cell membrane, are um, usually spanning, completely spanning the membrane. So again, those are called transmembrane. But there are some that are, are only extending partway into the hydrophobic interior. And then the hydrophobic region embedded in the membrane's interior will be the part that has stretches of nonpolar amino acids. So here are some examples. Um, a good protein that is a um, integral, boy, I am having the hardest time with that word. The integral protein um, that is spanning transmembrane is an aquaporin. So an aquaporin is responsible for allowing water to diffuse in and out of a cell. And so that it would be a good example of a protein that on the outside is going to have hydrophobic amino acids, but on the inside it, it is important that it have hydrophilic amino acids so that the water can pass easily through. So this is another diagram showing um, some examples of transmembrane proteins. Um, and proteins that are involved in signal transduction are ones that transmit a signal from outside the cell um, to the inside of the cytosol or even into the cell nucleus. Um, if it's something like a hormone that is traveling from another part of the body, it can trigger a receptor on the inside of the cell to signal the nucleus that a protein should be made. So it's going to stimulate the transcription and translation process.
So these are the main functions of a membrane protein. You can see here, and we're going to look at this some more. But you can pause this and write these down and make sure you just are familiar with this list. And this is another picture um, that's just showing that mosaic format of the cell membrane. They're saying here that it's a collage of proteins and other molecules embedded into the lipid bilayer. So that's where we get our idea of a mosaic. So these are the six major functions of proteins in the plasma membrane. Um, we either can have transport of specific solutes into or out of a cell. Um, we can have proteins actually involved in enzymatic activity right in the cell membrane. Sometimes they can be catalyzing one or a number of steps in a metabolic pathway. And I mentioned in Chapter 6 lecture how, for example, in photosynthesis and in cellular respiration, some of the enzymatic processes are actually occurring in the membranes of the mitochondria and chloroplasts. Um, a fourth function is cell-to-cell -cell recognition, so allowing other proteins to attach two adjacent cells together. So a form of junction can occur with the help of these um, plasma membrane proteins. Um, this is another way to look at this is intercellular joining of adjacent cells with either gap or tight junctions. Please look those up and know the difference between the two of those. An attachment to the cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix um, which helps to maintain the shape of the cell. Because again, remember, we have this floating, um, I don't even know how to describe it, gel of a lipid bilayer that's floating around the outside of the cell. So it does need some structure. And so proteins can help as kind of the tether holds for the cytoskeleton or the ECM to actually hold the cell into place and maintain a functional shape to it. So now we've talked about lipids and proteins. Um, the last um, component of cell membranes that we'll look at are carbohydrates. So we mentioned that proteins can be involved in that cell-to-cell -cell recognition. And part of the way they do that is by um, allowing a carbohydrate to attach to the protein so that cells have kind of a flag um, to identify themselves to another cell or to um, signaling molecules. So the ability of a cell to distinguish one cell from another is um, made possible with the help of membrane carbohydrates. An example of this is with our blood cells and our blood types because what distinguishes what type of red blood cell that we have, whether A or B, or for AB blood type or O, that is all about what um, glycoprotein is on our red blood cells. So there is a carbohydrate um, that is an A type, a B type, an AB, or an O. O is actually the absence of any carbohydrate on the outside of the blood cell. So that's um, why there's that O designation. Um, but anyway, it's actually considered an antigen that is located on the outside of the red blood cell that tags it as a specific type. This is closely linked to the immune system, which is why you have to have um, blood transfusions with blood that is um, of the same type as your blood type because um, those markers on our outsides of our cells are what cause our immune system to either recognize the cell as part of us or as a foreign invader. And so if we get, for example, the wrong blood type, your immune system sees that flag that is from another country on the outside of the um, transfused blood and views that as a foreign invader. Okay, so now 
We're going to briefly talk about movement across the cell membrane, and then we're going to switch over to uh, look into osmosis and diffusion. So first of all, just talking about diffusion in general, um, what you need to be remembering is that diffusion is movement of substances from a high concentration to a low concentration. So it's a movement down the concentration gradient. And so those are phrases that you need to get comfortable with, especially as we do our lab next week, um, because the concentration gradient determines whether diffusion is going to occur or not. Substances don't just move across any barrier um, for any reason. Um, so Because again, the membranes are selectively permeable only allowing small molecules um, and ions. Um, thing, only certain things are allowed, like gases, are allowed to pass through. So simple diffusion is that movement from high to low. Um, this is what makes up passive transport. And because it's using the property of diffusion, um, there's no energy required to make this happen. It just simply happens through the random movement of molecules that's already occurring. So this is an idea of diffusion. Actually, this is an animated um, little diagram here, but I don't have it um, turned on for this lecture. But if it, I, it were here, you can imagine that diffusion would take this high concentration of molecules and spread them out into where there is no concentration or a low concentration. So the cell membrane can use the um, concept of simple diffusion to move some things across the cell membrane. So things that are nonpolar, um, like hydrocarbons, or gases like CO2 and oxygen can pass easily through the cell membrane without any help. And so if you have a high concentration of oxygen, for example, outside of the cell and a low concentration inside, through simple diffusion, that oxygen will just pass through the cell membrane into the cell. And vice versa, if you have a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the cell, in a low concentration outside, you will see the carbon dioxide diffuse down the concentration gradient, which will carry it across the cell membrane to balance out the concentrations on both sides. Even hydrophilic things um, like ions or polar molecules can actually pass through the cell membrane, but they do it very slowly. Um, so it's a very slow process that's really not functional. So in order for that to occur, and, or things that are large molecule, molecules like glucose or other sugars and um, water, for example, as a polar molecule, all of those things are able to squeeze through that um, lipid bilayer. But again, it's very slow because of the interactions that are occurring um, that just make it not flow very easily. So it really, simple diffusion is occurring, but at not a very functional rate. So in order for those um, things that don't pass easily, we need facilitated diffusion. So if we have this imbalance where we have a high concentration on one side of the cell, membrane and a low on the other. In order for diffusion to occur for some molecules, particularly things with a polar charge or ions, they need um, a channel that is like a tunnel through the cell membrane to pass through in order for that diffusion to work. So an example is like this channel right here, um, which again, most of these channels are going to be proteins. Um, and if we have this high concentration to low, um, we will have diffusion occur through that channel. So again, facilitated um, diffusion is going to be for hydrophilic molecules 
um, ions, polar 